India has over 50 satellites in orbit around Earth. And the satellites are made at the UR Rao Satellite Center in Bengaluru. And I have with me Mr. M. Sankaran, the director of the UR Rao Satellite Center, somebody who's been involved as a power system specialist. That's why I call him the powerhouse of ISRO. If India's Chandrayaan 1 was a grand success for finding presence of water molecules on the lunar surface, Chandrayaan 3 created history by soft landing nearer the moon. Uh, Dr. Sankaran, are we planning a sample return mission from the moon? Are we planning, uh, uh, what are we planning next? No, it's a natural progression. Once we land on uh, a planetary body, the next uh, logical step is to bring something back from there. The next one would be to send a human there. These are all logical steps and uh, the work is already going on. We are already uh, identifying a mission concept, how this kind of uh, sample return from moon can be achieved with our available resources like our launch vehicle capacity, our uh, uh, wherewithal to do a mission again to go to moon. We have, with all these uh, known constraints, we are already working on uh, uh, configuration, which can ultimately result in a sample return mission. Yes. How soon? Uh, maybe two, three years uh, is the earliest we can go to uh, hardware realization phase. At least two years it will take for us to come to hardware realization. Maybe three to four years. It's not a bad, uh, bad time to uh, expect this. Yes, three to four years it can happen. You also had the Mars Orbiter mission or Mangalyan, and you have spoken about a landing on Mars. What is the preparation from ISRO or the landing on Past Mars? Past couple of years we have been uh, studying uh, the mission configuration for a lander uh, to Mars. Uh, there are two things which were uh, holding back. Uh, one is. Uh, uh, the Chandrayaan 2's uh, unsuccessful uh, attempt, so which uh, slightly slowed us down about our confidence on the sensors that are required for landing. So now that uh, we have, because it is not that sensors did not perform well in uh, Chandrayaan 2, sensors perform, did perform well, but since we did not achieve the final goal, we were not fully confident these sensors are adequate. Now we know that uh, what can be done with these sensors, we, are, we can now move about that. One obstacle has been now uh, removed. Uh, the second one is related to uh, our ability to put higher mass into orbit. Now uh, with the present LVM3 capacity, still we have a, a gap for our uh, uh, landing requirement to Mars because the energy requirement to go to Mars and uh, land there is quite high. The landing in Mars is, has its own challenges. In addition to the gravity field, like uh, what is there in moon, the atmosphere also poses uh, it is a like challenge. It, yeah, the heating that happens during the entry into the Martian atmosphere will, will call for additional uh, protection, thermal protection, which is again mass. So we are uh, studying that. Now already in the launch vehicle side also there have been announcements that are going on and we do expect in another two years uh, the launch vehicle should be able to give us at least another 20 30 percent more so i think we have now a case with with that as the target about 20 percent increase in the vehicle capacity in two to three years we should be able to come out with a strategy for a, a lander already we have a we have an outline we have to only now finalize this and move forward wonderful and prime minister also asked for shukrayan or a mission to venus how is that shaping up that also we had actually gone up to the uh, presenting for uh, internal reviews in our committees, the uh, Shukrayan uh, concepts. Uh, that is going to be an arbiter that uh, concept have been uh, presented. Now that uh, this uh, success has given more confidence not only to us but also to the establishment, I think it, it should be uh, possible for us to carry it forward. Yes. When can we expect? Any See, these, uh, these Ma uh, Mars and uh, Venus missions uh, have uh, cyclic uh, opportunities in terms of energy. You can launch any day, you can go. Oh, uh, because the availability of the planet closer Dep to you. Yeah, depending upon the relative positions of uh, the planet Earth and Sun, some of the years we get uh, opportunity with the minimum energy requirement. Correct. 
that for uh, uh, venus may happen in another two years which is too short for us now to make another uh, mission maybe four five years down the line yes we can uh, look at uh, venus mission now coming back to what are bread and butter missions for isro and which is important for you and me which is the earth imaging uh, you have the mission called nisar the nasa isro synthetic aperture radar uh, i believe the instrumentation from nasa has already come here uh, what is the status sir the spacecraft has been now fully integrated uh, it is right now in the antenna testing because the major part of uh, this uh, spacecraft is a 12 meter unfurlable antenna which is delivered by nasa so now the uh, the rf radiated mode testing is going on once this testing is completed we will move the satellite to the thermal vacuum chamber so we are in the home stretch after this is uh, this this test is through and there are no observations we are on the home stretch after a long gap we will see a real collaboration between isro and nasa which is essentially the world's largest democracy and the world's oldest democracy what is special about nisar see nisar uh, is uh, a, a really huge satellite for earth observation very expensive and also it is going to introduce a new technique in synthetic aperture radar uh, synthetic aperture radar by itself is a relatively new technique for earth observation which there are a number of satellites now in orbit both um, indian as well as others but uh, nsr is going to introduce a new technique called sweepsar the sweepsar technique is going to be used in uh, spacecraft for the first time in nsr this is going to allow the uh, radar to have a very high resolution very wide swath imaging of the area because the swath and resolution are actually uh, complementary to each other sure. generally a high resolution satellite will have a low swath whereas nsr is going to have a very wide swath and a high resolution this is a first of its kind technology that is going to be done for in space for the, by this nsr spacecraft so that was mr Sankaran the director of the UR Rao satellite center telling us about the future missions of the Indian Space Research Organization and some things which excite me are the NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar which is essentially a satellite which will look for changes of climate change and then the docking experiment i am very much looking forward to that because that is a gateway to our having our own space station in the low earth orbit from inside the ur rao satellite center of the indian space research organization with camera person kumar pallav bagla for ndtv